what qualifies you oh. to do any teaching? I mean, you're you sitting. Ask you that, Richard. Yeah, sometimes I've been asked that. <laughs> well, it's a fair, fair enough question. After I left school, I had a gap year. <laughs> And I went to teach in a school, so I had a bit of experience as a teacher in a school. Teaching was not for me. <laughs> it was a primary school in Western Kenya, and um, I mean, I learned hugely from the general experience of living in Kenya and so forth. But I don't think I was a very good teacher, partly because um, at that level. I find it very difficult to capture the the pupils' attention. You know, they were more interested in doing all sorts of other things. Uh, whereas at this level, people only come here because they're interested. At the level of eight, nine, ten-year-olds, they're there because they've been told to be there, not because they want to be there. And that makes a difference, in my opinion. Call it luck, call it karma, call it whatever you like, but. In 1988, when I moved back to this country, I had a, still have a very good friend here in Chiswick, and he said, well, while you're looking around to somewhere to live, find your feet, you're welcome to sleep, sleep on the settee in my, in my room, in my spare room. So I said, well, that's great, thank you very much. And then it was Laurie who said to me, do you know that just around the corner here, there is a Buddhist vihara? Is that chance? Is it meant to happen? So I started coming regularly to the London Buddhist Vihara um, from 1988 onwards. And after some years, the then head monk, Venerable Dr. Vajranyana, asked me if I would like to take on teaching a course for beginners, an eight-week course for beginners, uh, which I was very happy to do. And so I started doing that. And then I started taking on a few more other jobs teaching because Venerable Vajranyana was then in failing health, and although he was a brilliant, brilliant teacher, there were occasions when suddenly at the last moment he would say, I, I, I can't teach tonight's class because of his failing health. So I would sometimes fill in for him. Uh, I was helped, of course, by the fact that I'd heard him probably twice, if not three times, teach the same material. So I had a rough idea what I should be saying. And so I was able to, to fill in for him, I hope, successfully. And uh, since then, I've been doing some more regular teaching, um, not only in the Vihara, I've done some teaching at the uh, Buddhist Society in uh, Victoria, in London, and um, I'm enormously grateful for the impact that Buddhism has had on my life and how much it has helped me to live my life. And if I can share even a little part of this with others, I'm very grateful to do so. I was sitting on an aeroplane somewhere over eastern Canada reading a book and I thought if, I, if, there, if you, you have to pick on one moment it would be that moment when I said yeah, this, this teaching really is significant is for me um, but I, as I think you know there's no one occasion when you formally become a Buddhist. There's no baptism as in Christianity. There's no confirmation as in Christianity. There's no other rite or ritual which marks you out as officially a Buddhist. I, I think this really is a, a significant and most valuable teaching, although I don't understand it at all, completely, it is certainly well worth further investigation. That is what I want to do. And so that was 
if you if you have to if I have to pick out one moment, that would be the one moment. But there are lots of other little moments when you think mm, this is this is worth going into in more detail. And we've been very 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 lucky to have here in London um, the the vihara with the the monks we have here who are all, in their different ways, such wonderful men and who, who all offer something. I remember a man called John who used to come here for Venerable Vajrayana's classes. I remember him saying, you know, I don't mind what he's teaching. If he was just reading the telephone directory, I would still come here just because of the way he does it. And I thought, well, yes, it's not only the formal teaching, it's the way they live their life, the way they deal with things, the way they talk, the way they act, so many things which are, I think, um, so valuable for us. And the fact that we have monks here, I think is such a, a, a wonderful thing because there are lots and lots of Buddhist centers, but they don't have monks. And I think there's a kind of um, energy which we have and they don't have, because the monks, you know, they're, they're, they're born into Buddhist culture, this is their life, and they live it, which you don't find in, in places where you have no monastic presence. So I, I think we're, we're very, very lucky to have s these men here who are, you know, they're not larking about, they're, you know, they're serious, they've dedicated their lives to this. It's not um, somebody who just comes to a few classes and then goes away and wanders off and does something else for a while. You know, they set us a wonderful example. They set us an example, they set us they, they give us inspiration, uh, they give us teaching in the very widest sense of the word. And um, we're very, very lucky. And also I think we're lucky to have such wonderful support from the Sri Lankan community, because there again, they are committed from, from birth. They're born and brought up in Buddhist culture. It's not, again, something which they've come to later in life and have decided to uh, give it a whirl, see how it goes. Uh, these are people whose, whose whole life is based upon the Buddhist teachings. And I think that's also very wonderful. And they teach us, I think, a great deal by the way they practice. I mean, generosity it's extraordinary, particularly with food. You're probably not here often enough, but when dharma has been given to the monks in the morning, okay, they will always eat the leftovers. They always over-prepare because they expect to eat the leftovers themselves. But they're so careful. Anybody else is around. Do please come and have some food. Do please join us. And, you know... This giving of food is a very important practice and it, it's, it comes to them, I think, in the cradle. They get it from then onwards. And that is a, that's a, sounds like a simple thing, but it's a very important part of their life. And that should be a very important part of our lives as well, the practice of giving. We don't, pra we, okay, in the West we give. We give very generously but for totally different reasons. We give when we see a need, some disaster. Wonderful, very kindly, very nicely. People fork out lots and lots of money and give very kindly. Nothing wrong with that at all. But that is not Dharma as explained in Buddhism. And so that's a whole practice which, if we didn't have a Sri Lankan community here, we wouldn't be getting. Are you familiar with the um, with the fan? Yes. You see, to me, that's very wonderful. 
you hold the fan in front of your face and the monk teaches from behind the fan. So there's no um, cult of personality developing here. There is simply, you listen to the words, that's the important thing. Thank you, Mr. Welcome, Paul. Welcome.